It's quite a while I did the morning services. Last week I did the evening. So can we just stare at each other a while or stare at me and say hello, good morning to one another. Okay. All right. So welcome to one and all to our novena service. And today we start a special novena in preparation for the annual procession. And we welcome those who are here the first time to Singapore and to our church. Okay, let's begin with the hymn, Glory and Praise to Our God, page 13. We'll sing two verses. Glory and praise to our God, who alone gives light to our days. Many are the blessings He bears to those who trust in His ways. We, the daughters and sons of Him, who build the valleys and plains. Praise the wonders our God had done in every heart that sings. Stronger now. Sings he best to those who trust in his ways. In this wisdom he strengthens us like gold as tested in fire. Though the power of sin prevails, our God is there to save. Stronger still. Glory and praise to our God, who alone gives light to our days. Many are the blessings He bears to those who trust in His way. Today we offer petition set two on page 23 of your booklet. And the response is, intercede for us, O loving mother. Now back to page 20. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we are grateful to God for the many blessings we have received from Him through the prayers of our mother perpetual help. Let us once more ask her to pray with us and for us. When faced with difficult decisions and put to shame in front of others, that we forgive, that we may forgive from our heart those who have hurt us. That we may not resort to drugs, drink, or gambling as an escape from life. That parents and children may grow in understanding for one another. In choosing our entertainment and recreation, the young people may accept the challenge of living the Christian faith that we may be blessed with an increase of vocations to the different ministries of the church, that we may work for the just distribution of this world's goods, that we may always take pride in doing our work well, that we may be community-minded and willing to serve others, that we may bring the knowledge of Christ to those who do not know him, that many may accept Christ through baptism, that we may die at peace with Christ and our neighbor. Now we spend a moment of quiet and present our special needs to our Blessed Mother. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear our petitions and grant them to the prayers of Mary, our mother. Amen. Please be seated. 
Right, uh, you have sent in a total of 930 letters, uh, from which 666 are petitions, and 160 thanksgiving, and 104 mark private and confidential. Uh, let's hear now some of the petition placed before our Blessed Mother. Mother, please grant us a safe journey to and from China, and a fruitful discussion with the suppliers and business opportunities there. I pray also that it will be a good bonding time and support for the travelers. Mother, please intercede for my brother to be free from his problems and be a better person. May the family be peaceful and not bear grudge any grudges against one another. Mother, I also pray that my leg will be fully healed after an accident uh, three years ago and that I may walk normally. Mother Mary, I've been asking you for help and you have never failed me. Please. I pray that I may be able to receive my work pass soon. Mother, please bless my friend who has a heart condition and is diabetic. Help her to lead a normal and peaceful life. My niece's son is coming back home from prison. Please, Mother, guide him along the right path and that the family will be able to relate with him well. My colleague met with an accident and is now in a high-dependency ward. He's being monitored and may need a blood transfusion. Mother, please help him to recover soon. Please bless my mom who is in her 90s with good health and to be able to walk by herself so that she can come to your shrine. And now we hear some of the thanksgiving letters. Dearest Mother Mary, thank you for answering my prayers and for blessing my son and daughter-in-law who is pregnant with a child. Keep them safe and that they will continue to grow in a good relationship. Sign your grateful child. Dearest mother of perpetual help, there was a long period when my daughter doubted her faith and drifted away from God. She was deeply wounded by the treatment of her friends in school who are also fellow Catholics. She attended a youth conversion experience retreat recently. She experienced the presence of God in such a deep way during the retreat, and now she is full of joy in wanting to praise God. Mother Mary, I am truly grateful for your loving intercession. Sign your faithful daughter. Dearest Mother, six months has passed, and it was a terrible start of the year for my family. My mother's dementia became worse, and my sibling's rivalry over mom's caregiving almost led me into depression. I found myself shuttling between my own home and my mother's house. My husband's existing health problems also worsened due to my inability to cook and care for him properly while taking care of my mother. My husband, however, kept telling me to trust that God will not test beyond my limits. In despair, I prayed fervently to you and our Lord Jesus for help. Finally, I managed to find a reliable maid agency, hired a good helper, and enrolled my mom in a daycare center. My mom is now happier, and her mood swings have decreased. I know that all these would not have been possible without your help. I pray that you would continue to watch over my mom and family and grant me the grace to forgive my siblings for abandoning my mom and forget the hurt they had inflicted upon on my mom and the family. Please give strength to all dementia patients and their caregivers. Sign, your loving daughter. Dear Mother Mary, thank you for always helping my family and answering my prayers. My youngest son has dyslexia and he was not able to read even after hiring many teachers to help. Last year, you sent us a gift a teacher who was able to motivate and help this child who was so frustrated as he could, as he just could not get it right no matter how hard he tried. He has started to understand and is more motivated to study now. Thank you for sending the best help that he needed. Sign, your Catholic daughter. And let's share the final one. Dearest Mother Mary, I would like to say a big thank you to you for being such a wonderful, loving, and merciful mother to me all these years. Thank you for seeing me through the, my early childhood, my growing up years, my teenage years, my national service, 
my job and my career, and now my retirement. Thank you for being there for me in good times and in bad times, in trials and temptation, in sickness and in good health. Thank you very much for being my dearest mother of perpetual help. Signed, your grateful son. So thank you for all these inspiring letters that suddenly give us confidence in our love and devotion and faith relationship with God and with Mary, our mother. So let's kneel, page 34, prayer of confidence, together. Mother of perpetual help. Help us for the love of Jesus Christ. Stretch out your hand to us for sinners. Bless and thank God for giving us his confidence in you. In the past, yes, all sin, but with your help, we can conquer. And you will help us if we pray to you. In all our temptations, may we always turn to you and say, Mary, help me. Let me never lose my God. Amen. Let's rise. And we share with Mary her prayer of praise and thanksgiving to God. My soul glorifies the Lord. <coughs> his mercy is from age to age and those who fear him. He puts forth his psalm in strength and scatters the proud hearted. He casts the mighty from their thrones and raises the holy. He fills the starving with good things, sends the rich away empty. He protects Israel, his servant, remembering his mercy, the mercy promised to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Mary, you are the mother of Christ. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you with all our heart for giving us Mary to be our mother. She's so loving, so thoughtful, standing, and so kind. We thank you for her. Amen. One verse, page 4, 5, daily, daily sing to Mary. Daily, daily sing to Mary. Sing my soul, her praises due. All her glorious actions cherish With the heart's devotion true Lost in wandering contemplation Be a majesty confess Call her mother, call her virgin Happy Mother Virgin Bless. Now please be seated. And before our reflection, there's some notices for your attention and action. And the first one is the special novena uh, in preparation for our annual procession starts today. And we have adopted the theme, uh, Completely Yours. Uh, it's based primarily on uh, pope St. John Paul II, when he became Pope, he adopted the motto Totus Tuus, which in Latin uh, translate uh, directly would mean totally yours, totally yours. But the committee have kind of twitched it a little bit and make it easier perhaps uh, for us to digest completely yours, okay? So uh, you're welcome to this special novena, and please do invite your friends, okay? Be part of the whole movement of the church in this new evangelization that everybody take part in various ways to introduce others, especially the non-Christian or lapsed Catholics, to come and to get to know God through Jesus and, of course, through our devotion to Mary, our mother, okay? So invite them to come, and that is open for all. And the second notice is the, the students from the ITE College West uh, they are here this weekend to help raise funds to support the Morning Star Community Services, which offer care night service for children of families in need. Okay, it's a Catholic enterprises or ministry. So they're helping the ministry there to, to do this. So they'll be selling items outside the church, and all proceeds will support uh, these children and their families. So give them your best support huh, after the service, okay? Is uh, one million dollar each person okay? Rupiah. 
I knew. <laughs> okay, all right. Okay, my friend, let's begin our reflection. Completely, Lord, completely yours, or totally yours, totus to us. Uh, let's anchor on the gospel, okay, because it eventually goes back to the gospel. Now, our Lord, in the end, he summarized that all in his ministries, all that he taught, all that he preached, the miracles he worked, the marvelous actions he did, he performs healing, forgiving, casting out demons, raising the dead. He simply puts it that in all these, it can be summarized in one single commandment. We have two parts of God, but they are just one. And that is the commandment of love. We see it in the Gospel of John, what is termed as, uh, categorized as the greatest commandment. Okay? And I've been using that quite often during the confession okay, to ask penitents to look at this once again. So the greatest commandment, he summarized, it all, summarized all that he taught and, and did. Love God with all your heart and mind and soul and strength and love others or neighbors as yourself. I've mentioned this before from this pulpit, but the gospel is never tired of being repeated again and again and again until the end of time. From there, we know that the Lord wants us to eventually become like God. Okay? In the midst of interaction with, with one another, which is not easy because we are born sinners. We have our faults and imperfections. But we do have love also, but not good enough. So that's why God has to come in, be part of us, be one of us, and then show us how to be such a person. Okay? So that commandment is, the implication is that God wants us through Jesus to help us become like God, to be holy, to be loving. He simply puts it, to be a truly loving person. And in that, we can therefore love others. Because apart from that, it's not going to be easy because we are sinners. So, not only God wants us to become such, but in that process of become such, we belong completely to God. If you and I entertain the idea of being in heaven, that when we die here, when our mortal bodies finish, whether it's burned or buried, but our soul remains, if we entertain that after this mortal body is finished, and that, that means the first death really took place, and that we hope to get into heaven, then we got to entertain and be convicted with this idea and the truth that we have to be like God. And if it's hard for us to understand, then that's, God, that's why God makes it easier through His incarnation. Look at Jesus. Okay, God, whose spirit has taken flesh through the Virgin of Nazareth to show us how to become completely belong to God. A human person can belong to God because that, that was God's original intention and still is. And so Jesus gave us that one. And of course, just like many other teaching that challenge the people of Islam even for us today, uh, to get to heaven is no easy matter. Even to practice this is not easy. And then one more, one more issue which uh, really kind of uh, make the disciples uh, wake up when he say it's hard for a rich person to get into the kingdom of God. It's easier for a camel to get through the eye of a needle than for a rich person. Now, rich people here, I know there are some of you here, okay, most of you are multimillionaires. <laughs> okay, it doesn't mean you cannot have health, wealth, huh? but... It's, that teaching is about if you make wealth or money as your God, that's a problem. Okay? All right. So the disciples then ask him in response, then how is it impossible then to get into heaven? In other words, they were a bit discouraged as they pondered this teaching of Jesus. But he then turned around and gave them encouragement. What did he say? He said, for man or humanity... Inclusive language for humanity is impossible. But with God, everything is possible. What does that mean then? What is the implication? The implication is that if you want to get this right, then we better make sure we get a good, loving relationship with the person who gave us this teaching. God in Jesus Christ. And that's why our faith relationship with God, with Jesus, our faith in Jesus, is not about just I believe it's not a classroom matter, you know. It's not a doctrine matter. 
doctrine and classroom are just expression that we need to pour it out, we need to express in order that we can comprehend with our head. But that's not all. Our heart has to comprehend. And that is why it's a relationship. We've got to enter into a relationship, a faith relationship. And eventually for that to be alive and to be fruitful, we have to love. And God is love. Okay, and that process, then this whole idea of totally yours, total stools, completely yours, will grow in us. Our person, our character, our soul, our attitude is absorbed into God. And once we are secure and anchored with God, then our life can be fruitful as we relate with one another with all the challenges and imperfections of life. He expressed that in another parable, but he said, with the parable of the vine and the branches. Okay, he's the vine, we are the branches. And just as a branch, if it's not in union with a, with a vine, it cannot bear fruits. It's fruitless. So the same, we are the branches, the Lord is the vine. If we who just believe but are not in relationship with the Lord, we cannot bear the fruits of the kingdom of God. Okay, that means I believe, but I'm still the same sinful character who don't want to change. The gospel that Jesus offered and his person is, I believe, I work with him, and I change. That's what it's about. It's very simple. But we are good at resisting that. That's the problem. Okay? But once you and I are aware, then we can make an informed choice and say, this is what Christianity means at its basic. I believe in this God. I want to belong to this God. Therefore, I need to know and I need to love. That itself is a growth process. It's not something static. It's a growth process. And so long as you and I keep growing, we will arrive at that. This novena that is, gives honor to our Blessed Mother will have to also look at her as in many, many topics or reflection. How was our Blessed Mother completely yours to God? How was she total stewards to God? There are indicators, there are signs in the gospel that point to that one. For sure, one is that when she was visited by the angel Gabriel, she, she was greeted with the, the greetings full of grace. That means she had the blessing of God to welcome Jesus, to welcome God's will, and to belong to God. But it doesn't come automatically. Though full of grace, that means without the original sin, what we also sometimes call the sin of Adam and Eve, which we are all born with, but Mary was spared of that because she has, God has planned for her. But God did not take away her free will. That's a precious gift from God to every human person. And so Our Lady belonged to God completely, not just because she was full of grace, but because she freely gave herself to the Lord. In good times and in tough times. And the toughest came at the foot of the cross. She did not lose faith in this God. She was mystified, no doubt, but she remained steadfast, gazing at what was happening, feeling the pain and sorrow, but remained steadfast in her heart for God. Another group of people that were able to taste this one and get a good grip of this are what we call the saints in the church. The saints in the church. Not just past, but even today, there are living saints who are growing and growing into the Lord more and more. But we have to look at those who have gone because it means they accomplish it, they achieve it. The present living saints are still in the process of fulfilling it. But the saints who have gone before us, they are testimonies of what it takes to truly, truly belong to God completely in mind, heart, soul, and body. They were not full of grace. They were like you and I, born into families of varying times and generations and locations, subjected to the faults and failings and imperfection of any human family. They do not have perfect parents. Some have parents who became saints, like St. Teresa or Lisieux, the parents became saints. But generally, most of us, like them, we came from imperfect families. 
But they work through, the saints work through with the Lord. And as they come to know and love the Lord, the transformation took place. And some of them changed dramatically. One good one that stood out, you can read about it very clearly, is the person of St. Paul the Apostle. Indeed, a dramatic transformation from a persecutor and opposition of, of the gospel, Saul changed and became Paul. And from there, he gave everything of himself to the Lord, completely yours, Lord, to serve you. A process in which you and I are called to, you know. I don't think any of us there will be, not and myself or so, will be qualified for canonization, No. Singapore still got a long way to go, huh? Okay, to have any saints in the church yet. But all of us are called to be holy. We may not be canonized, but we are called to be holy. It's the same idea. A process in which we have to learn to know this God and love this God. You've got to be aware that your faith has got to be alive. If you find yourself a faith in which it's static, it's just a routine, come to church, Pray on worship mass on Sunday, novena perhaps Saturday, and the rest is close shop. Better question yourself again, what is this all about? Okay. Our faith has to be alive. You've got to check yourself. Am I growing into the Lord more and more? And check the fruits of the changes. Am I becoming a better person? Am I becoming a more loving person? Am I letting go of the unlovingness in my character, in my attitude? If we can identify those movements, you are alive. Your faith is alive. It's not static, and worse, it's not dead. Okay? So take care of this one, because as Mary gives us an example, and the saint gives us an example, God is saying to us, you can be my loving people. You can be a loving, holy person, because God is holy. Did he not say, be holy as your heavenly Father is holy? Be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect? Be compassionate as the Heavenly Father is compassionate. What is he talking to us about? He's implying we can become, if we are with him, branches and vine in one. Let's work hard on this one. Okay, the memorari, page 36. <clears throat> Together, remember most gracious Virgin Mary. Inspire this confidence of light to you, Virgin of Virgins, my mother. To you I come before you as stand sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not my petitions, but in your mercy hear and answer me. Amen. Let's rise. Oh, brother, we pray for the sick. We continue to pray for the sick. Lord Jesus Christ, bore our sufferings and carried our sorrows. Hear our prayers for the sick. Help them to unite themselves with your sufferings. And if it is your will, may they get better. Let them never forget that you care for them. For the Pope's intention and our local church. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. <clears throat> okay, let's rise. We'll sing verses 3 and 4, Mary, from thy sacred image. <clears throat> and for him thy eyes are pleading, while to us they look and cry, Sinner, see my child, your Savior, who for love of you will die. But we're sinners, we are we. At thy feet, thy helpless. 
father's children, thy perpetual succor Succor us when stormy passions You have given them bread from heaven. Let us pray. O oh God, in this wonderful sacrament, you have left us a memorial of your passion. We ask you to enable us to worship the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may constantly feel in our lives the effects of your redemption. You who live and reign forever and ever.
Uh, before our final hymn, just a gentle reminder to support the students from the IT College in their work to help the Morning Star Community Services for needy children and families. And confessions will be available after the service there. So let's close with the hymn, O Mother Bless Him, God Bestows, page 602 verses. Mother, bless whom God bestows on sinners and on just. What joy, what hope thou givest those who in thy mercy trust. Stronger now. Thy children bend the suppliant name. Dear Mother of my God, do thou remember me? Remember Mary, virgin fair, it never yet was told that he who humbly saw thy care depart and unconsoled. Stronger. Thy children bend the suppliant knee, dear Mother of my God, do thou remember me. Well done. God bless you, our great devotees of our Blessed Mother. Have a pleasant weekend and do cooperate with the car park warden.